Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Life of the Amazonian, which is brought to you by Bad Comet. It's for one to four players, ages 14 and up, and games generally run about 60 to 120 minutes. In order to enrich the precious Amazon, the world's largest and most prestigious nonprofit scientific organization, the Good Comet Society has gathered you into the lush jungles of the Amazon rainforest. Be prepared to run your very own conservation organization to make the jungles of the Amazon flourish. Restore the rainforest, plant trees, and aquatic flowers to help the environment thrive. Depending on your choices, your jungle can be a symbiosis where your various animals can live in harmony or it may become a nest for the specific species to thrive. Succeed in cultivating the most prosperous jungle and be rewarded. Life of the Amazonian is a strategic meeple placing game that combines bag building and pattern building. You will restore land, place various animals, and plant your trees and flowers to enrich your jungles and create the most ecologically rich jungle. Your main goal here is to be the player with the highest environmental score by the end of the game. A big part of this game is all about resource management. So you have several different types. You have coin, you've got leaf, you've got water, and you have fruit. Those are your main currency. All of those things you're gonna be using to purchase animals, plant trees, plant flowers, do restoration, build more land out into the world, evolve your jungle basically. So you're gonna need all these different resources in variation in order to achieve your goals. Now, the thing is, is that there's many options. You're gonna have so many options on your turn, but everything is dictated by what you're gonna pull from your resource bag. Every turn, you're gonna pull five resources. And you're obviously gonna start with a set of resources, but you have a lot of ones and some twos here. But and you, through the course of the game, you're gonna to wanna to upgrade those resources. So you have the vault, where you store all the different types of resources, and it shows the exchange rate at the bottom as you try to get bigger and better versions of each type. And that will dictate how well your bag performs through the course of the game. So setup on this game is variable based on player count, specifically where the animals are concerned, how many are in play, and that's the game in trigger. When you run out of animals on five separate cards, that will trigger the game end. And you have tokens to dictate when they've run out. Now, these cards are going to show how each of these animals are gonna score you conservation points and how they get placed into your jungle. There's different terrain types that are required and so forth. So you have to be very mindful about how you create your jungle and where you place your animals. Maybe you're going for a specific type to get the maximum number of points. So you have to look at those cards and see what best works for your jungle and your layout. And all these animals are critical, obviously, for helping your jungle thrive. And of course, animals are not free. You have to purchase in order to put them into your jungle. In the bottom left corner of the cards, you'll see the costs related. So again, all these different resources you're gonna need are gonna come into play for everything you're gonna be doing. And you also get your own special animal. You'll be dealt two cards, you get to pick one and discard the other. Here we've picked the anaconda. It's still gonna have a cost associated with it. You can't just automatically put it into your juggle, but it has all the same requirements and things about where it can live and so forth, but it has special abilities along with all these different types of animals that are unique to your jungle. Now let's take a look at the waterfall of life. Now there's three different tracks, well, four different tracks really. You have the restoration track where it shows the resources you're gonna need in order to put more land into your jungle. So you're restoring the land, bringing it back to life. And then you have the tree track and the flower track. Now they're both gonna work very similar. You have to pay a resource and you'll move up the track. Now both those tracks are gonna give you conservation points at the end of the game. And all three tracks have bonus icons. You get bonuses for moving up and along them. And there are some that only the first player to arrive there will get that bonus. So some really interesting aspects there as you move along those tracks. Finally, we have the storage track. Now, that's really about how many tokens you can bank, how many you can leave on the table in front of you from turn to turn. Along with your various tokens for the trees and the flowers and other land masses, the completion tokens and so forth, you have a deck of cards. These are, are the nature cards. You've got scenery cards and you've got insect cards. Now the scenery cards, you can collect up to four of these. You can only have four at any one time, but the insect cards are one-time instant activations and they get discarded. So those cards are definitely things you're gonna to wanna to tap into as well. Again, costing you more resources through the course of the game. So those are the basics of everything you're gonna be doing in the game, but how does it all come together? Well, 
Gameplay here is very straightforward. You have an action phase and then you have a cleanup phase and you'll do each player will do this in turn. So the action phase consists of eight different possible actions. So it's really gonna be dictated by what resources that you were able to pull from the bag. The first action available to you is going after more resources in the vault. You're gonna look at the exchange rate at the bottom and exchange coin for a different type of resource, fruit, leaf, water, that kind of thing in order to bolster your bag and give you more options down the road. Or maybe you're going for an area restoration. You'll move along the track, pay the resource in leaf and gather one of these hexes and place it into your jungle. Now, obviously you wanna create some synergy about how much land you have a certain type and the different types here is that you've got forest, water and wetlands. You're trying to combine those and get the right animals and put them in the right places. But again, you also have trees and flowers that should be mindful as well. So another action available to you is paying the cost and gathering one of these animals, placing it into your jungle. Or you might pay the cost and place a tree into your jungle, or again with a flower you could do the same thing. Or you might just use your action to go after one of the nature cards. Again, paying the cost. Again, everything is dictated by what tokens you have in play. Another option available to you is to move up that storage track. If you do, that just gives you more resources that you can hold on to from turn to turn, placing them on the table in front of you, getting ready for that next big turn you're gonna have perhaps. And then finally, you can buy bonuses. Now, there's all kinds of bonuses in this game. You can get bonuses for placing animals on your board, for moving up the different tracks, but also you can purchase bonuses. And there's a guide along the side of the Waterfall of Life showing you what is available and how you purchase those. And there's a handy player aid to guide you through the different bonus choices, their icon and what's available to you. It really does help. And you know, you can do simple things like get another resource from the bag or get one of these individual terrain types to either change up your jungle or add on to it. You also have some generic workers that you can get and you can relocate. This is actually critical. As you expand your jungle, it might be important to move your animals to another place in the jungle. And you can renew nature cards. You'll discard two, draw two new ones, put them in play. And then finally you have trash. Trash allows you to get rid of tokens. Maybe you need to get rid of one of these ones because you need to get to resources more quickly, but you can get rid of the ones that are in play on the table or in your discard pile. Now let's talk about the discard pile because as you move through the course of the game and spin these tokens, you're gonna put them in your discard boat. And once you get to a point where you can't draw enough tokens, then you'll cycle all those resources back to the bag and draw what you need. So that's kind of what you're doing in the action phase and then you move to the cleanup phase. First, you'll discard tokens that you haven't used, but you can hold on to some of them based on where you are on the storage track. Then you will draw five new resources from the bag gearing up for your next turn. So you're gonna continue this way round after round until five of the animal cards get used up and then you're gonna score points. Now there's numerous ways to score points in the game based on what animals you have in play and there's a handy score sheet to guide you through that. But there's groupings and you'll just follow the information on the animal card to determine how it scores. And you have the different tracks for the trees and for the flowers that you'll need to score against. Also, nature cards, the scenery ones are gonna have different ways to score as well. So many different ways to gather points in this game. It really is interesting because every time you play, you really do have different synergies that you create with the different animals and the trees and so forth as you put them in play, as well as creating the best jungle and getting the most conservation points. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, you know this game is absolutely beautiful. Again, they have the animeeples that look so good in the game, and as you create your jungle, it starts to be this living, thriving thing. I really like the aspect of that and how you create those synergies, and also it does become somewhat puzzly too. And the thing is that it changes up every game, how you play, and especially what animals you have in play really changes the whole dynamic for sure. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me, and until next time, we'll see you at the table.